We had a great question come in about how compound turbos work. So I'm gonna talk about how compound turbos work and how they're different than twin turbos. Everyone that's watching our stuff gets to sound smarter than everybody else at the bar. So we're feeding exhaust from our exhaust manifold. You can see we're feeding it up in here. This is going to our first turbo. So this first turbo is typically called your manifold turbo or your high pressure turbo. And I'll get to why it's called the high pressure one here in a second. The exhaust will flow through this turbine. So it's gonna spin this turbo. And instead of exiting and going out of the vehicle, it's actually going through and it's feeding into the foot of our next turbo. So this is our second stage of compression. Or actually, technically, this is our first stage of compression. The exhaust flow is coming in and it's gonna be feeding our what we call the atmosphere charger. So once we get the exhaust feeding, I'll show you how the actual pressure feeds. We're gonna be sucking in air through our air filter into the first turbo. This is the second turbo being fed from the exhaust, but it's getting air first. So this turbo will compress the air and we, we're gonna say pounds of boost, but really just think of it as a pressure multiplier. That's what turbos are, they're pressure multipliers. So we're gonna take this turbo, and this is gonna say, let's say we're gonna do 30 pounds of boost from our first turbo. And that'd be like two bar, we're multiplying the air two times. So now we're going into our high pressure turbo. The reason we call it the high pressure turbo is instead of seeing atmosphere, which it, where we are is like 14.2 PSI, it's actually seeing the 30 pounds from this plus the other 14 something from atmosphere. So this guy is seeing like 40, what is that? 42, 43 PSI of boost. And what it's doing is it, again, turbos are pressure multipliers. So now this is going to multiply it again. So let's say this multiplies it. This one multiplied by 2x. This one is also mul multiplying by 2x. So now we have 80 something PSI leaving our high pressure turbo. And then that will go through this pipe right here, and that will travel out through our intercooler and into our intake. So let's talk about blow-off valves, because that's a common misconception. So you typically don't see blow-off valves. Not never, some people run them, but it's very rare to see blow-off valves in a diesel application. The reason why is because we don't have a throttle valve. There's nothing to block the airflow. So it just kind of gets backed up at the front of the motor. So if you think about a gas motor, you're opening the throttle and you're closing the throttle. That's letting air in and blocking it. So the reason you run that blow off valve is when you're making a bunch of boost and suddenly you chop the throttle off, the air backs up and it puts a bunch of surge into your turbo. You don't really get that in the diesel world. We will still get surge occasionally, but it's really rare because the air is just going to chomp through that air anyways because we don't have that. We don't have any throttle plate, no throttle valve at all. The way the, the power is controlled in a diesel is the more fuel we give it, the faster it'll rev. It's not like a gas engine where you're really controlling it by airflow. So again, diesels actually rarely run a wastegate, but in the performance world, we run wastegates because when you start hitting nitrous, you'll overspool your turbo. So we run wastegates really just to control turbo speed in the first turbo, this high pressure turbo. You say 80 pounds? Yeah, I mean, in, in the diesel world, we'll run 80, 100. Um, the Godfather one time ran over 240 PSI boost. The diesel world is different than the gas world. So if you come from gas and you're like 20 pounds of boost is a lot, that's nothing. A stock diesel truck will do 30 PSI or more. The drive pressure goes through the roof if you don't have a correct setup. If you're going to be pushing a lot more air, you also have to have a big enough turbine on the manifold side of your uh, setup. I'm running an 87 turbine with a 10 housing. So people that have been on here a lot have heard me talk about, I actually have two housings to run with this setup. Right now we're going to be running a 10 because I'm going to be doing some stuff on the street and I just want a fun truck. When we're going to start getting into the big boy dyno stuff, Whitley is kind of the first one. We're going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We're actually going to size up our housing to a 1-1 housing to allow more flow to keep that, that back pressure in check, the drive pressure in check. The other piece that we have 
if you're in the performance world, you typically run a wastegate. So I'm running a 45 millimeter hypergate. So if drive pressure is getting out of control, I can just burp it all off and I can just burn the weeds below the truck. 